Thank you, Cheryl, and good morning uh, to you all. So tree health is quite a wide uh, topic, uh, and it entails various different aspects. Let me just get my... So it, firstly, it entails that you use quality nursery trees. You must make sure that you plant in optimal soils. Your planting practices must be optimal. Make sure that you, you plant in the right way. Pruning must be done in the right way. Don't try to get too much from your tree at a too young age. Mineral nutrients should be applied correctly. Water management should be, should be done in the correct way. And your pests and diseases should be managed. Now, since I'm not a horticulturist or a soil scientist or an entomologist, I won't be tackling any of the above, but I'll focus on diseases. What diseases do we want to manage if we want a healthy tree? So there are various diseases, and my colleague has already covered um, root rot and replant diseases, and I will focus on canker and wood rot diseases. Now, a few years ago, um, Karin Tron and Vian Stein um, compiled uh, a series of three articles within the Fruit Journal where they focused on nursery tree quality looking at physical characteristics of a nursery tree uh, and also the physiological characteristics of a nursery tree. And then I joined forces with them and we, we did a third article on the phytosanitary status of nursery trees. So the first point is we would like to start with a nursery tree that is healthy. And there's a specific system in place that help us with that. The Deciduous Fruit Plant Certification Scheme provides specific phytosanitary requirements to ensure that disease and pest free trees are produced by nurseries. Inspectors visit the nurseries three times a year and it's with their final inspection in winter that certification takes place. Trees are checked for acceptable shoot and root growth and also a well-formed graft union and diseases and pests that can occur on the roots. So what these inspectors must um, look for are a wide variety of diseases, which are listed in this table. Um, viral diseases, pathogens, and insects. Now for the viral diseases, the scheme has got a specific system where the, um, the mother blocks are screened and leaf samples are tested with ELISA and PCR for specific viral diseases to make sure that the plant material are free from viruses. Now for the pathogens and insects, it's only based on visual screening. So for the insects, you can, you can see an insect pretty easily, but for pathogens, if they have infected the plant material, the roots or the plant itself, and they are latently within the plant, you can't see them from outside. And in terms of canker and wood rot diseases, there's only one pathogen on the list, Chondrosterium perperium, that causes silver leaf or lootglans. So within the scheme, there's definitely a lack in terms of putting on the pathogens that causes canker and wood rot that can be present in nursery trees. So from a uh, Hort Coast Science side, uh, a few years ago, they asked me to look at nursery trees and the occurrence of canker pathogens on um, apple nursery trees. So within this project, for which I must give the final report at the end of the year, um, we found some really interesting results. That from 480 trees, and these trees were from three different rootstocks um, and from uh, four different nurseries, we found that 65% were infected with canker and wood rot um, pathogens. So what did we typically see? When you cut a nursery plant that are visually um, clean and has been certified and has already got the blue label to say that it's certified, we often see that from the wound that is made at, on the rootstock, there's an infection that runs down the, uh, the trunk. So uh, these few pictures illustrate this. Also, photo D illustrates that from that pruning wound on the rootstock, uh, a wood rot fungus have already infected and caused some wood rot. And in this case, all three of those pathogens are wood rot pathogens and cause it uh, white rot within that specific area on the nursery tree. And this was quite alarming because wood rot is something that we usually associate with older orchards. It's not something that we associated with a tree, and at this stage, the tree is about three years old, being sold off to farmers. 
Then we went further and looked at young uh, apple trees and what do we find on young apple trees? And we uh, sampled from uh, one-year-old orchards, uh, um, 12 different orchards, and what you can see there on the, on the left-hand side is a typical canker. And that, that you identify by the shoot being uh, sunken in um, and the tissue being uh, brown. And we sampled specifically plants that did not have replant um, disorder. So we looked for plants where the roots were, were healthy so that we know that the dieback symptom that you see on the tree is definitely um, a canker. So making longitudinal sections uh, through uh, this type of plant material, you can see the vascular discoloration inside of the tissue, and that is typical what we have with uh, different canker pathogens. Uh, and here's a set of three um, pathogens that we isolated, the Diaporte, the Plaudia seriata, and also uh, the Dimosferia. Interestingly enough, we, we also analyzed some soil. It was unfortunately only one soil sample from each of the farms. Um, and for nine of these orchards, the pH of the soil was very low. It was um, uh, lower than 4.8. And also the phosphorus levels were very high. And these two characters are seen as uh, characteristics of sub, uh, marginal or suboptimal soils. That will lead to stress for a tree growing in these soils. So that most probably contributed also to the development of cankers. Now we've looked at nursery trees, at young trees, and now we look at older trees, uh, older orchards. Um, what type of symptoms of cankers and wood rot can we find in older orchards? So typically dieback, that you can see there on the left-hand side, but also wood rot. And that wood rot on the right-hand side is a brown wood rot. There's two different types of wood rot that you can find, white and brown wood rot. And um, the, path, the, the wood rot pathogens that we find normally usually cause white rot, so this, is, this was a bit singular. Also, you find cankers. And on the top left, you can see that that dark black discoloration on the top of that branch originates from the wound that's covered by a blue wound sealant. So my question is, was that blue wound sealant effective? You can clearly see at the bottom, uh, the photo just below, that canker running down the trunk of the tree. And then when we cut such a canker, you can see the internal discoloration that we associate with such a canker. So the, the xylem tissue, um, this color is completely brown and is not functional anymore. This is just a, a compilation of different types of internal um, symptoms that we can find, uh, which are different ranges of uh, dark brown discoloration of your xylem tissue, and then also on the bottom right, some white rot as well, and specifically for palm fruit. Now, not to confuse you with too many um, fungal names, unfortunately, the, the canker pathogens are not a simple group of uh, organisms. It's really quite diverse. Um, <clears throat> but what we have found in South Africa, and this table represents what we found from all the orchards in South Africa, are the diversity associated with dieback and canker symptoms. And what I would like to highlight is that um, the Botrysferiaceae, that is a group uh, of pathogens that we can also call just the bots, um, they came out in the highest numbers. They occur very often on both palm and stone fruit. So in plant pathology, uh, we use some uh, com uh, books to help us uh, to identify diseases, and there's a nice compilation of diseases on a specific crop. So for stone and palm fruit, I would like to highlight the different wood rot and canker pathogens that they, um, that they have and that they, that they illustrate. So for stone fruit, there are um, uh, 11 different diseases that they list in this compendium. Uh, and what we have in South Africa are dieback, fungal gamosis, leukostoma canker, silver leaf disease of Lootglans, and eutypa dieback, and also wood decay. And then there are two, two of which the pathogens are present in South Africa, but we have not found the diseases yet on stone fruit, ceratocystis canker and constriction canker. For palm fruit, I think it's 10 or 11 different diseases. What we do have here are silver leaf disease, leucostoma, wood decay, and then diplodia canker, diplodia mutila has been found on stone fruit, but not on palm fruit. So 
according to what has been published, this is, this is what we have, but our research has shown that, that we've got a, a larger diversity. And also I would like to take the opportunity to, to really emphasize that we do not have European canker that's caused by Neonectria galagina, because I was um, uh, at a nurseryman uh, who told me that uh, it is present in South Africa, and I really had to uh, talk quite a while for him to, <laughs> to tell him it's definitely not present in South Africa. European canker is the, um, the canker that's being most controlled in, the, in Europe and in the UK on, on palm fruit. It is a serious canker disease that we really want to prevent coming into South Africa. Now I would like to just illustrate a few of these canker diseases and wood rots. Um, and one of them is leucostoma canker, because leucostoma canker is very prominent on stone fruit. So it is caused by leucostoma um, symptom, and symptoms can be seen as gum formation, where infection has taken place on the left, a canker that forms due to that infection, and then a sporulation structure, which we call a pycnidium, that oozes out spores on the right hand side. Now, if you look at the disease cycle of uh, leucostoma canker, Firstly, I would like to point your attention onto the little volcano. <laughs> While I was sitting here, I think that's the best way to describe it. The little volcano is shooting out the spores. So that is the fruiting structure that you will find on an infected branch. When there is enough humidity and rain, it will produce spores and the spores will be splashed out. And the spores are commonly uh, dispersed by, by rain splashing, but also pruning shears and also insects. It can then infect um, susceptible areas on, on the trunk or specifically wounds. So canker and wood rot pathogens, they, they optimize by um, infecting via wounds. So either leaf scars or a pruning wound stub, um, those are the areas that they infect and they colonize the tissue and they would slowly start to form a canker which would develop throughout the season and usually more towards the end of the season that canker would then form a fruiting structure that can then again produce inoculum for the next season. So here are some nectarines um, that have been uh, infected by leucostoma. Uh, and you can see if you remove the bark, the very distinct uh, dark brown mm. canker that's running up on that trunk. In this case, it was quite severe. It killed these sure. young trees. Um, and I would like to add that it was, it was due to the, the canker, but also this nectarine uh, orchard was uh, planted on a suboptimal soil. So that definitely had a, had a big influence. And on the right hand side, you can nicely see how this fungus forms its sporulation structure. And those orange little strings that are hanging there are hundreds and hundreds of spores that can be dispersed then to another tree. Internally, the wood looked like, uh, like here, uh, dark, different kinds of dark striations. And from the sample, uh, a wood rotting fungus was also uh, isolated, which we refer to as a basidiomycete. Um, some more symptoms of trees that have been infected by leucostoma. And then I would like to move to the Bottersphiriaceae. I know it's a, very, it, it's a tongue twister. <laughs> But uh, it's a family name for a group of uh, pathogens that are really important. According to the compendium, it's fungal gamosis that's caused by Potrosphera dothidiae on stone fruit and Diplodia canker caused by Diplodia mutiline apples. What we have in South Africa on stone fruit is there the whole list, which includes different species of Diplodia, Neofusicoccum, Lasso Diplodia, and Dothiorella. On palm fruit, Diplodia, Neofusicoccum, and Botrosphera. So, and the reason why this group of pathogens are really important is because of all the tree samples that have been analyzed at our disease clinic, the Botrysphiriaceae are number one coming out of all of these cankers. So they are a really important group of um, canker pathogens. And I think a lot of research needs to be done to understand their disease cycles and also to describe their, um, their whole disease cycle. So some symptoms of uh, these pathogens, it can cause uh, plum shoot dieback um, and that side branch causing dieback. And then importantly, it forms sporulation structures. On the left hand side, the red arrows point to these round little structures in which they form then their, their spores. Um, and on the right hand side, you can see the damage caused by, by this, um, this pathogen on an um, apricot tree. Moving on to the wood rots. So, um, Trametis vesicular is actually seen as, a, as quite a virulent wood rot. Um, it, it is um, 
and it, we also find it very often here in the Western Cape in the orchards. Mm -hmm. And the symptoms that this um, fungus causes is papery bark. And if you think about um, how often you see papery bark symptoms in older apple orchards, it's most probably due to this wood rot fungus um, presence. And the, the, the wood rot that it causes is a white wood rot. And the reason why it causes white wood rot is because it also degrades lignin. So here you can see the fruiting structure on a, on a, on a cut-off side branch. And, and this case was, was quite serious, um, where uh, there you can see a, a young tree that, is, that has died, but we, uh, uh, we looked at an orchard that was 28 years old, top red apple cultivar, and typically we saw this papery bark symptom at the base of sure. these um, um, side branches. Um, and on another tree, what we found after we removed some of the weeds, because in this specific orchard, the weeds um, were, were, were quite abundant, uh, mm -hmm. we find these nice, fresh, new um, um, fruiting structures of this uh, wood rot fungus. And lo and behold, that is definitely Tramitis uh, vesicular. Schizophilum comine is also a very important white wood rot fungus uh, that we found on apple trees. Um, it's, it's not only saprophytic, sometimes you only see it on dead trees and dead branches, mm -hmm. but it can also form cankers, as you can see on the photo on the left-hand side. There's that, that sunken in part of the wood um, that is a canker running down the wood, and on the right-hand side you can see also where did that canker originate from, from that enormous pruning wound that was made. So what can we do to um, control uh, canker and wood rot diseases? Firstly, we need clean nursery trees. That is the first challenge that we have, and that we are also trying to solve some of the problems. So currently we have a project running to look at alternative pruning wound protectants to put on the wound on the rootstock to see if we can lessen the uh, infections that we, that we get currently. Then in newly planted orchards, um, planting practices must really be, be, be excellent so that the plant itself, the tree itself, does not have any stress. Um, if you do get a canker on a young tree, you can apply what they call remedial pruning. So that is you cut away the infected part of the tree. Um, and also, um, uh, yeah, it's difficult to say exactly how, how low below the, the canker, but you should not see any internal discoloration within your wood. And then, very important in young orchards, is to remove dead trees. Because mm -hmm. that picture that you see there with, with fruiting structures of Schizophilum comine was in a young orchard, um, standing there producing spores that can be then released and infect again wounds that are made on these young trees. In older orchards, <clears throat> sanitation is really critical. Removal of cankers, dead branches, and also fruit bodies. So there is a picture of a typical <laughs> canker. And this is something that you typically see in some of these older orchards. Uh, the main trunk of the tree is really rotten with Tramitis vesicular and lots of fruiting bodies that can produce spores uh, continually. Pruning is a very important practice and because pruning wounds are critical for the infection of these pathogens, you need to take care of your pruning. Prune on good weather days, not during wet days. So these, these pathogens, they produce sporulation structures, especially when it's wet and also spores spread via um, splash dispersal. Make clean and smooth pruning wounds and try to make a wound so that the natural wound he healing takes place as fast as possible. And then also to use pruning wound protectants that also have got a fungicide. So um, pruning can be dangerous. <laughs> I hope your trees doesn't look like this. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's quite an extreme case. So my take home message for today for optimal tree health in regards to canker and wood rot pathogens is firstly to ensure clean propagation material. But that is not in the hands of a, a producer, of a farmer. What you can do is to ensure stress-free conditions for your young trees, mm. to protect pruning wounds and to sanitize, especially older orchards, because the newly orchards are plants planted next to older orchards, and that, that is in very close proximity. So, and these spores are carried by the wind as well. It can disperse further than just between two rows in an orchard. Thank you. I would just like to acknowledge all these uh, funding bodies and people that have aided and helped with the research on canker and wood rots here. Thank you.